Welcome, friends. My name is Carl Bellinas, and I am the president of the Friends of Maple Grove Cemetery. We are a historical and cultural society working hand in hand with Maple Grove Cemetery, providing educational, cultural, and spiritual events for all, honoring over 88,000 people cared for at this historic cemetery. Since the start of the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic, we have created many online concerts. Now we are inaugurating our first online lecture. We hope to create a series of lectures and even online walking tours in the future. I want to thank you for all your dedication and continued support. None of this would be possible without the support of Bonnie Dixon, the President and Executive Manager of the Maple Grove Association. I also want to thank the Friends of Maple Grove Board of Directors. This group of volunteers has worked tirelessly over the past 15 years to make Maple Grove a unique cultural and historical experience, honoring the past and those for whom we care for. Thank you. Our first Maple Grove online lecture tells the story of an extraordinary couple Mr. Ransom Delano and his wife, Charity Demarest Delano. A short newspaper article came to light dated 1887, and it mentions them briefly. This led to an intense research project that revealed an exceptional tale of fortitude and courage. This couple's life story was interwoven with some remarkable organizations and takes us on a journey from a rural New York City setting to that of a great city metropolis. I want to thank Helen Day, our Senior Vice President and Researcher Extraordinaire for assisting us with their tale. Our story begins in Cortland, New York. Ransom Delano was born into a large family in Cortland County, New York in 1827. His unusual name Ransom means deliverance, rescue, and is of English origin. The Delano family can trace their roots back to Philippe Delanois, an 18-year-old passenger on the Fortune. It was the second ship to arrive after the Mayflower in 1620 to Plymouth Bay in 1621. Philippe's name was Americanized to Philip Delano. He made his fortune in America and has many illustrious descendants. This plaque was raised to his honor. It reads, Philip Delano, 1602 to 1681. The site of land granted to Philip in 1637 by the Plymouth Colony Court. Born in Leiden, a Huguenot, he came to Plymouth Colony on the fortune in 1621. A purchaser, he helped repay the colony's debts to English merchants. Well respected, he became a free man, and the Delano family in America descends from him. Notable descendants of the Delano family include United States American Presidents Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Calvin Coolidge. Also, astronaut Alan B. Shepard, who was the first person to hit a golf ball on the moon in 1971. Another descendant of the Dano family is the writer Laurel Ingalls Wilder, famous for her series Little House on the Prairie. Sarah Ann Delano Roosevelt was the second wife of James Roosevelt I and is the mother of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, descendants of Philip Delano. Here we have photographs showing the Roosevelt family with First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt and pictures showing the president with his mother. Charity, on the other hand, was born into a large family in Greene County, New York in 1826. The name Charity is derived from the late Latin caritas, meaning generous love. From Latin caris, dear beloved, the English name Charity came into use among the Puritans after the Protestant Reformation. 
Charity's father, Job Austin Demarest, was a farmer who married Eleanor Shimmerhorn in 1815. The Demarest family traced their roots to a David Demaretz, 1620 to 1695. He was born in France. He was married in the Netherlands. The Demarest family came to the New World in the year 1663 on the ship, the Bante Cow, which means spotted cow. The Demarests were early settlers in the town of New Harlem from 1663 to 1678. David was a lot owner, magistrate, and constable. The Dutch had settled the area in 1639 and called it Neu Harlem, New Harlem, after a city in Harlem. In 1664, the British invaded and they anglicized Neu Harlem to Harlem, which is now located in Upper Manhattan. The Demarets were also an early founding family of the colony of New Jersey. When they moved to the Hackensack area, they built a house and a mill near what is now the Old Bridge. The land had been purchased from the Tappan Indians. The deed dated June 8, 1677. In his final will, dated August 26, 1689, David refers to himself as a yeoman and miller. By the time of his death, he had 26 grandchildren. Ransom Delano and Charity Demarest both lost their sight as children due to illness. They were destined to meet in the city of New York. In 1842, Charity's family sent her to the New York Institute for the Blind, located on 9th Avenue between 33rd and 34th Street in the country in Manhattan. Ransom came to the Institute in 1844. He was 20 years old. The New York Institution for the Blind is a very famous American organization. There was no systematic attempt at educating the blind in America until 1831, when John Dennison Russ, Samuel Wood, and Samuel Ackerley incorporated the New York Institution for the Blind. They recruited the first class of three boys from the city almhouse on March 15, 1832. The school was held at various locations before moving to a large estate donated by a James Borman in 1832. The estate was out in the country with a mansion facing 9th Avenue between 33rd and 34th Street. The rent was one peppercorn per year. In 1834, provisions was made to admit pupils to the school at state expense. The mansion stood on property in the section of Manhattan called Strawberry Hill. This country estate ran between 8th and 11th Avenues and 29th and 39th Streets. The mansion was made of white Sing Sing marble, buttresses, and turreted. The mansion offered the blind students ample living space in a section deemed one of the most pleasantest situation on Manhattan Island. The city had not opened in this section and there were no paved streets. The property lacked city water and sewers. Gas lines came later. From 1832 to 1868, the average cost per year to educate, support, and clothe a pupil was $112.33. The number of pupils under instruction in 1868 was 180, and that would have included charity and ransom. Above is the earliest known photograph of the New York Institution for the Blind after the fourth floor addition was made to the building in 1870. Prior to this, heating was provided by stoves. This renovation introduced central steam heating to the structure. We are fortunate to have a series of rare photographs showing the quality of life for these students in the 1800s. The mission of the school is to provide quality educational programs and support to the students, 
and families in a safe, caring environment. To awaken and inspire student curiosity, lifelong learning, and fulfillment. The school was committed to providing a well-rounded curriculum. Educators taught the traditional subjects, such as grammar and history, as well as vocational classes in basketry, piano tuning and repair, hand sewing and metalwork. Here we have a rare view of the chapel and the organ. The New York Institution for the Blind provided all the basic needs for their students, including gymnastics and many outdoor activities. Ransom and Charity spent many years at the New York Institution for the Blind and they fell in love. And in 1854, Ransom and Charity married, and they continued to live on the west side of Manhattan, not far from the Institute. Ransom was a diligent worker and is listed in a number of Manhattan directories, working at several different trades from 1860s to the 1880s. He is listed as an upholsterer, a mattress and brush maker. During their lifetime, Ransom and Charity would have known about this New York City organization. On March 1, 1860, the New York Times reported the formation of the Department of Public Charities and Correction. The department would consolidate and oversee the workings of numerous institutions. The Colored Home, the Colored Orphan Asylum, the Lunatic Asylum, the Nursery Hospital, the Smallpox Hospital, the workhouse, and the penitentiary among them. Funding was set aside for the building of a permanent headquarters for this city organization. The site chosen was at number 66 on 3rd Avenue at the corner of 11th Street. Architect James Renwick, who designed the Smithsonian and St. Patrick's Cathedral, was commissioned to design the new structure. Department workers would enter on the 3rd Avenue side of the building, while the public would use the entrance on the 11th Street side. On July 29, 1887, the New York Herald published an article called Double Eagles for the Blind. It reported the Office of the Commissioners of Charities and Correction would give their annual gift of $40 in the form of two $20 gold pieces to the blind. A line of people appeared at the building of the Commissioners of Charities and Correction. To quote from that article, the donations which were made possible by an appropriation of $20,000 by the city. This worthy charity is only for the indigent blind. As Superintendent Blake expressed, the money is designed to help the beneficiaries to help themselves, not to pauperize them. It is an incentive to self-support. This 1887 article makes mention of charity and ransom. Mr. and Mrs. Ransom Delano, an aged couple, led by a young man. They lost their sight by physical elements. I do not see, said Mr. Blake, a single dirty looking man or woman among more than 400 who were here today. All looked like respectable people, and there was moreover no appearance of dissipation among them. By 1895, the Departments of Public Charities and Corrections were separated. It was renamed the Department of Welfare in 1920. In 1891, Ransom died and was buried in the south border section at Maple Grove Cemetery. 
Charity passed away in 1898 and was buried next to her husband of 47 years. The New York Institution for the Blind, which had been a major part of Ransom and Charity's life, is shown in this circa 1905 photograph. A retaining wall at the far right edge was constructed to protect the blind students during the construction of the Pennsylvania Station. At this time, the entire fourth floor of the center building was devoted to a chapel, music classrooms, and a piano tuning department. The old mansion had seen a lot in its lifetime. It started off as a country estate and now was in the center of the bustling city of New York. This picture was taken during the construction of Pennsylvania Station, just a half block away. The tracks in the foreground are the tracks of the 9th Avenue elevated subway. It's the 34th Street platform. Partially visible is the arch over the school's front gate, which had a granite tablet bearing the inscription, New York Institution for the Blind. Here we have a rare bird's eye view of the construction of Pennsylvania Station, which began in 1905. The Institution for the Blind is located in the upper right hand corner. Here we see a photograph of the newly completed Pennsylvania Station, truly a magnificent architectural wonder of its time. By the beginning of the 20th century, the New York Institution for the Blind was actively seeking a new location. It was surrounded on three sides by an elevated subway, a major postal facility, and a major national train depot. The once quiet country neighborhood was now pulsating with the beat of New York City's urban rhythms. It is hard to believe that this was once a country estate. The New York Institution for the Blind was once located here between 33rd and 34th Street, next to the James Farley Post Office building and the Pennsylvania Station. It was torn down and replaced by modern structures. In 1922, construction began on a new facility in the Bronx the present location of the Institute. Now known as the New York Institute for Special Education, the school offers programs to children ages 3 to 21 from the five boroughs of New York City, Long Island, Westchester, and counties in upstate New York. We come to the conclusion of the first online lecture by the Friends of Maple Grove. It was an honor to bring you the life story of Charity and Ransom Delano, who are now cared for at Maple Grove Cemetery. It is our hope to bring to you many more online lectures in the future. I would like to end this lecture with a poem by Rick Fontes. It is one that Charity and Ransom would surely appreciate. Requiem for a Rainbow Walk with me a while be at my side, a steady hand. A whispered voice should I stray. Don't lift my burden. I must learn its weight. Merely bide with me a while till God compensates my sight. Thank you, everyone, and come again. Mm -hmm.